today's special edition, Mike's going to give us his review on Batman, Superman, and Battle of the Super Sons. Pat says, try not to lose your head at this week's pick three. And lastly, we got dragons, boxers, and clowns. Oh, my. Welcome to a special edition of your favorite geek culture focused comic book loving podcast, Comics and Collectibles in the Crawl Space. I am, of course, your fourth or fifth favorite podcasting host, Kevin. Don't be confused um, by that. And then, of course, I'm not alone. I've got a full house with me today. Thank all that's holy. Happy Easter, Mike. Hey, everybody. What's going on? Oh, man. Jawas are coming. Hold on. I've got my ghost cam on. I'll be back. <laughs> Wrong button. And then, of course, Patrick. Who? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm totally confused. And then last but not least, already been in the show a couple times, to be heard from many times more today, Karen. <laughs> you know, I just realized as I was noting um, a special edition show today, uh, that it's a special, special weekend. It is Easter and April Fool's Day, right? That, those two things are falling. Has that ever happened before? That's had to have happened before. I just never noticed before. What do you, what do you, what, what yeah. do you say about that, Pat? It's probably at most likely, almost definitely happened before. Yeah. Well, it's pretty cool. You know, yeah, Jesus, know. Jesus fooled everybody. They thought he was dead, but he wasn't. You know what I mean, Mike? Yeah. Even though it's the last day, it's uh, it's just a weird feeling. Easter in March, you know. <laughs> well, no. Tomorrow's the first. Well, Monday's the first. Monday's the first. Monday's the first. Yeah, tomorrow's the thirty-first. Oh, see, I thought tomorrow was the first. That is weird. I'm going to note that right now. That's I'm, I'm completely on board with you, Mike. Are you, that is totally are you weird. Your plans now? Yes, I thought they actually <laughs> fell on the same day because I thought tomorrow was yeah. uh... Oh, no. You probably had all kinds of awesome stuff set up. It's like, it's not going to work now. It doesn't line <laughs> up. Exactly. Let me delete all that extra stuff. Nobody's going to get it. Sorry about it. Uh, correction. Thank, thank you for correcting me. Everyone else, uh, besides for me, thought and knew or knew, and I thought that Easter and April Fool's Day was the same day this year. But I'm wrong. Sorry about it. Sorry about it. <laughs> well, the first of and probably the only mistake that'll happen all day today, right? Yeah, better, most likely. <laughs> all right. Um, Mike, yes, sir. I, 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 I guess you've got a few thoughts to throw our way uh, on today's first segment. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I had a couple ideas. All right, cool. Here we go. Mike, right. go ahead. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, which mic are you talking to? 
You keep saying Mike, but I don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> anyway. Uh, all right, so have you, ever, have you guys ever heard of Station Eleven? Never heard of it. All right. This is on HBO Max. Uh, it was one season, 10 episodes, and it's based on a novel by Emily St. John Mandel. I watched two and a half episodes. Now, the half an episode is I ran out of time, so I didn't get to that third one. But um, the stars, we've got uh, in, that, in this poster, these are two of the main characters. Uh, this is Himesh uh, Jintendra Patel. He was in Yesterday. And, and I think you reviewed Tenet, didn't you, Kevin? Yes, I did. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, the little girl, I didn't jot her name down. Um, How dare you? Woman, yeah, I know. I, I've got like front and back pages of information, but I failed to write her name down. Um, so episode one. This, you know, this takes place. It's, it's another one of those, uh, you know, end of the world things kind of, but not the end of the world, just uh, civilization kind of uh, goes backwards. Um, we so we open with an actor and uh, he's on stage. They're doing a play, a Shakespeare play. Uh, his name is Arthur Leander. And during the play, he has a heart attack. And uh, the character named Javon, who was played by... Uh, the mesh here on the poster. He's kind of the first one to act and he stands up recognizing he's having a heart attack. He goes down to the stage and he doesn't even know what to do. It's just, he reacts and goes down there. Um, unfortunately, uh, Arthur passes away. And while Himesh or while uh, the, the character Jivan is on stage there, he sees one of the child actors who is Kirsten. And that's the little girl right there. Um, usually, after the plays, she is, uh, her parents aren't there. She's taken home by um, a woman that uh, actually leaves with Arthur, who had the heart attack, leaves with him in the, in the ambulance. So this little girl's just left there by herself. So he offers to get her home. So he walks her home, gets home, and her parents aren't home. And this is where I was like, okay, first off, why weren't her parents at the play? And second off, why aren't they home, <laughs> you know, when she's going to be coming home? Um, but they're not home, so they end up uh, kind of making different plans. He's like, okay, you can just come with me. His sister, who was a doctor at a hospital, calls him and says, you need to get supplies and get to their brother's house because the hospital is overrun with people with flu-like symptoms. So this is where everything goes down. It's kind of, you know... It, I don't, I, I don't know when the book was written. This came out in 2021. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a flu-like pandemic. Um, people are dying everywhere. Um, so he ends up just taking her to his brother's uh, apartment. And it's, it's kind of crazy. They're standing there looking out the window. It's, a high, it's in Chicago, a high apartment. And this airplane just comes crashing down and just explodes. And, you know... You know, things aren't going to be the same there. Um, this episode ends 80 days after that initial day, whenever uh, he met her at the play. And it ends with them going outside, just the two of them. So I don't know where his brother is. They go outside and, you know, it's all winter. Um, and then it cuts from there. Okay, so that's 80 days after kind of day one. And then it cuts to 20 years later where this girl Kirsten is actually an adult now. And it, it cuts to this scene right here where she's reading this graphic novel. Nice. And the graphic novel is called station 11. Okay. And this is, this, this has this series. It's pretty interesting how it, it has a lot of flashbacks, kind of like lost, but a little less uh, organized in, in how they do it. They kind of had a system in lost, um, this is just very hectic on what periods they're jumping. Two years, the day of, 20 years, all this stuff. Um, so the, uh, you know, she's, she's reading this graphic novel called uh, uh, Station Eleven. Episode two, yeah, this is, so this is uh, the adult person. Uh, episode two 
begins two years after the initial events. Oh and, my gosh. This yeah, it's, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. Um, and Kirsten, she comes across the woman, uh, her character's name Sarah, and she's actually played by Lori Petty, which uh, uh, we remember from Tank Girl. And uh, she, she was Supergirl. Did she play Supergirl too? No. No. Who, who played Supergirl? The anyway. movie, Alan Slater. Oh, that's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, so, so, so she was in. Uh, Point Break. She was in Tank Point Break Girl. as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, th this woman is a part of a traveling symphony okay? and the traveling symphony is a group of actors and they put on Shakespeare plays and they follow this circuit that they call the wheel. It's just a big circle that they go around and they do these plays. Um, halfway through this episode, I was done. I was like, I, I didn't like any of the characters. Um, I, I liked, I liked the character Jivan. And the little girl, I thought they were good. I didn't like any of these characters do, putting on these Shakespearean plays. So I was pretty much done after this episode. Um, but what turned were some mysteries that, that came about. Um, there's a stranger and his son. They approach the symphony group. And the man starts quoting. He quoted a line from that graphic novel that Chris, Kirsten believes she has the only copy in existence. Because the the graphic novel was written and drawn by let me I'm getting ahead of myself here um, a woman named Miranda who was actually married to the actor Arthur Leander that died during the play. <laughs> so it's got a lot of these weird threads that all kind of just interconnect and, and weave throughout. So she's real. She's thinking she has the only copy of that graphic novel that was that was produced, and this guy, twenty some years later, is a quote, is quoted a line from it. Um, and another a man from the a secret community called the Museum of Civilization, he approaches them, and they're, they're they've kind of kept themselves hidden. He's kind of coming out of the shadows here, and he wants them to come and put on Shakespearean plays at their community, and they say no, they don't trust them. Um, and then in another flashback, we find out that uh, Kirsten's parents, uh, we found out their fate. They had actually passed away way back when it all started. Um, and we have no clue where Javon's brother is from the apartment. Um, so then we get to episode three, you know, that it, and it's basically just all the relationship between Arthur, who passed away at the heart attack, and Miranda, who was the woman that wrote the graphic novel. And that's and that's where what that's where we are. Um I've got some more stills here. The, the graphic novel, this is awesome. It was actually, there actually is uh, some artwork done. Like that's the cover. That's interior artwork. Um, it was actually uh, here. Maria Wynn is actually an artist who did this. And all she did was create the pages necessary for the show. Hey, patient Karen. Karen's like all Russian. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so I think it's great. I was like, wow, it's a really graphic novel too. So novel, HBO show, graphic novel, no graphic novel, just pages created that we see in the show. But still, uh, really cool. That was going to be my first question. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, so yeah, I liked episode one. I liked the characters. Uh, was I liked the beginning and end of episode two, and episode three was good. I would say overall, you know. Five bags of popcorn, um, because I'm not really, you know, there's some questions I want answered, uh, but am I willing to go back and put in the next, you know, five episodes? Yeah, seven, it's 10 episodes total. So I've oh, got 10, 10, you know, okay, yeah, so six and a half episodes to go. Maybe Emily already said, have at it, I can do it if I want. She's not really interested. Um, so I may get back around to it and change my uh, change my mind, see how things go. With, uh, some of the stuff well, that's happened a few times where uh, later on makes a show pay off. We've definitely heard that before, huh, Pat? Yep, so we don't know what happened to Giovanni either. He just kind of no, but this is what's so this is what's cool. Okay, so we've got this poster, okay, and then we've also got this poster mm -hmm. now. 
in the, in here, he's that house. This looks like it's set during the period when everything went down, when the flu like symptoms start coming about and everything start crashing. This is 20 years later in the same place. So I'm looking at like, how is all this, how does all this cross over and, and, and tie together? Um, it has a lot of great potential. Um, I guess if you like Shakespeare, you'll like it because they do some Shakespearean plays. I'm not a big fan. Emily's a big fan of Shakespeare, but she lost interest in it. That's what I was going to ask. Yes, yeah, I thought she was yeah. a big Shakespeare fan. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think it's just likable characters. You know, the the adult um, person. I'm just not a fan of her. I like the little girl that played. I thought she was a good actress. Um, you know, those characters. But uh, if we're going to get a lot of the Shakespearean group there, I don't know. That's where I am. Five, five, five bags of popcorn. Later on, if I finish it, I'll jump in sometime and let everybody know what I think. So, uh, okay. Station yeah. 11, five. It's on HBO Max. All right. All right. And then. <laughs> I wanted to watch more stuff, but I have to give Kevin credit. It's hard to find things to watch. And, you know, I didn't want to watch things that I didn't want to watch <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> just for the sake of watching it for the show. I'm like, okay, I want, to, I want to watch something I want to watch and it has to be pertinent to the show too. And that's a, that's a small list for me. So I think we've given a lot of credit for finding this stuff to watch and doing it. Um, but this one, this one was great. I watched this a while ago and then I rewatched it again. Just so I can freshen myself, uh, my memory. Batman and Superman Battle of the Super Sons. Um, this one was written by, oh, that is the wrong Batman review. Uh, this is written by Jeremy Adams, who, if you recognize his name, he had written a uh, run on The Flash. Um, I think he did some Green Lantern books uh, recently as well, uh, directed by Matt Peters. And um, let's see. Oh, and then the the uh, the voice actors might be popular. So people like the voice actor for Batman. I think he did the voices for the the video games. Um, but I, I thought it was interesting. Jonathan Kent is voiced by Jack Dylan Grazer, who was Freddie Freeman from Shazam. Uh, everybody else I don't recognize because I'm not real big into the animated stuff. Uh, That's a cool this, poster. That's a really cool poster. Yeah, I love that poster and. Yeah. I don't watch a lot of the, the animated stuff, but I'm a big fan of Peter Tomasi's Super Sons. I, I thought it was just great characters. They've since changed them, so uh, who knows if we'll ever get back to uh, Super Sons stories, so you got to take it where you can get it. Um, yeah. This is the 49th DC Universe animated movie, and this is the first one that was fully CGI animated. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and like I said, this is based on the 2017 version of the characters by Peter J. Tomasi and uh, Jorge Jimenez did most of the issues of the 16 issue run. Um, so I give him credit for creating a lot of the look of them as well. And um, so we start off with, you know, it's kind of the retelling of Superman's origin, the destruction of Krypton and Kal-El being sent off by his parents to uh, to Earth. And the reason that we're shown that is because in this huge aquarium is um, a, a, a Starro, and that all breaks, and he attaches himself to kal -El's ship. On his way to Earth, and he ends up falling off, and we end up finding out that where he goes to is, uh, he lands on the Watchtower. So, you know, that's, uh, and that, that comes out, we, uh, um, we'll get to that in a minute. So basically, you know, when it starts, Jonathan doesn't know he has powers. And he doesn't even know that Superman is his dad. And he gets all bent out of shape because, you know, his dad's always gone, saving the world. But he doesn't know that. He thinks he's out just doing reporting. Um, so he, he's mad because he misses. He's gone for his birthday. He's gone for his baseball game where he just can't and keeps striking out. Um, and that anger, uh, the kind of... Uh, manifests his his uh heat ray vision and that's that's where his first clue that he has some powers and he's all scared so of course his dad says i'm superman and it's pretty cool how he reveals that um let's see okay so on the watchtower green arrow is the only one there 
Um, and it starts to enter Earth's atmosphere. It's like, what's going on? So, of course, Superman sees it, takes off. He gets it back up. He goes in, talks to Green Arrow, and, uh, you know, they, he said they hit something. So everything is settled. Superman leaves, and it's almost like kind of a horror movie. You know, you see something sneaking up on Green, Green Arrow, and he turns around, and it's like something lurches at him. Um, obviously, we find out Starro. And uh, let's see... I wrote a lot of notes so I can stay organized. <laughs> this is tough. Um, so after that, Superman and uh, and Jonathan go to Gotham, and it's it's kind of funny, you know, some of the humor that uh, I found in Tomasi's writing for the series. That's what I was looking for here, and Jeremy Adams brought a lot of that with them. So once we see Damien and Jonathan interact, we've got that, you know, Damien's attitude and Jonathan's kind of innocence and uh, the way that uh, counteracts is, is, is pretty awesome. You get some funny lines from Damien, obviously. Um, so they go to Gotham and cause you know, Superman, they, 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 they talk to green arrow and kind of feel like something's off. So, of course, Batman and Superman go to check it out, and they both get um, infected with uh, the Starro. Um, let's see. And we also get Damien trying to become one of the Titans, and they won't let him because of his attitude and all this stuff. And then he find, you know, he's like, ah, well, I don't need you guys. So Batman and Superman, they went to the Watchtower, um, and we end up getting the entire Justice League controlled by the Starro Spores, Lois and President Luther controlled by the Starro Spores, the Teen Titans all controlled by the Starro Spores, and they all create this hive mind, and that leaves Damien and Jonathan to save the world. Amazing. Um, the character animation was great. Since this was all CGI, I, I felt some of the background should have been better. They almost seemed more like Backyardigan style, if you ever watched the Backyardigans. It's like a lot of effort went into the characters, but I don't know. The backgrounds just some were great, some not so great. Um, here's a here's a shot of. Uh, I mean, it looks good on this one, but other ones were just very plain and uh, real flat. Um, here's another cool. I, I thought the characters look fantastic. Yeah. Uh, just as a warning, there there are a couple choice words spoken by Lois, and actually some uh, clever editing. Right before she said the granddaddy of all words, swear words. Um, so uh, I'd give this eight bags. This is a definite watch it. Uh, I thought it was great, especially if you're a fan of the Super Sons. I thought it really captured a lot of the uh, what I liked so much about the comic book series. So that is what I watched. All right. I got a couple questions. You want to take that graphic down, or put the other one up? I should say. Oh yeah, this the uh, the main one. There we go. So yeah, um, has Starro always been? So I watched this. Has Starro always been a Starro spore face controller and a big giant or? One or the other, but how how has Starro always been? Do you guys know the history of Starro? Um, I don't. Pat? I always assumed that it was like a hive mind thing. There was it was the main one, and then all the little ones that go out and attach, and then they're they're what that main one thinks. They all it just controls everything. Oh, is that how it works? Okay. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. Yeah, I thought this was really good too. Um Man, who knew Damien was was a cow fan? Apparently, I thought that was pretty funny, Mike. Oh yeah, I should have mentioned the the bat cow. Yeah, <laughs> the bat cow had a. It was like obviously you know cow prints on them or whatever, and this was like an orange and white cow rather than like a regular dairy cow. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a cow guy either, <laughs> but it was all orange instead of black where typical dairy cows are black and white, you know, except across the face of the cow, it had a bat signal. Mm -hmm. It was like <laughs> perfect, but believable in a way. Yeah. 
<laughs> exactly. That's a that's a perfect way to put it. That's why I was kind of noting it because it was so cool. It it blended in just it looked like it was the cow's regular markings, but it was mm -hmm. definitely being a, a bad signal on his face. It was so funny. I imagine that it was really born that way. And Bruce Wayne's like, I need that cow. No <laughs> right. I need it. That's why I had it. And they, I mean, he's got a giant penny. And it's so funny because Jonathan goes, Look at that penny. And Damon's like, Don't touch the penny. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. And I, so, first thing I thought was what you mentioned too about how they were reliving Superman coming down from Krypton and, and hit that whole story. And I'm like, Geez, again? But then, like you said, you know, they kind of had to do that because they added, I guess, suppo I guess supposedly we're supposed to believe in retrospect now. We were unaware the entire time yeah. that Starro comes down with Superman, right? Yeah. And is that, that's fr a fresh take, right? That's not, that's something yeah, we never I don't seen. know. I don't know either. Yeah. Yeah. Starro attached himself to that. So I thought that was interesting. And then, um, yeah, I thought that I thought that Damien and 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 uh, I, I definitely appreciate your love for the Super Sons, Mike, more because yeah, their interaction with Damien being kind of a little jerk and a bully and having an attitude while Jonathan is is innocent and them being able to interact that way in a pleasant way to us, I, I thought it was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was cool. So yeah, thanks for uh, getting me to. Check that out this week too. Good choice. Good choice. Oh, thank you. Pat, have you ever watched any of the DC animation? There's so much of it. Yeah, no, I, I, I have quite a bit of it, but I fell way behind. There's just so many of them. Yeah, Seems like yeah. one, one a month practically. Right. Yeah, That's I mean, this is the 49th when it came out in October of 2022. So, you know, I haven't checked. I'm sure there's 50 some now. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yep. It's always kind of been the thing. It's Marvel has the, the theatrical motion pictures figured out, but uh, can't, doesn't quite have it right with the animation, but DC's always kind of nailed it with the animation and can't quite figure out the th theatrical motion pictures to make them that great right. either, you know? So I just wanted to say two things uh, before Mike finishes up on what he watched here before we move to the next segment is one, I said last week I would let everyone know what I thought of the finale of Halo 4. And uh, all I have to say is I don't know. I watched it. I watched the entire thing and I don't know how I feel. So stay tuned to next week's show when I actually do a review on it. Because I need Pat and Mike's opinions on something that I'm going to say before I can make an opinion myself on what I think of the finale, which wraps up the whole season of Halo 4 Season 2. So make sure you uh, stop by next week for that. I can't wait to talk about that. All right. Pat, are you ready for this next special edition segment? I hope so. All right. What do we got? All right. Uh, we have 10 covers I chose this week from a list of 511 covers hitting the shelves this Wednesday, April 3rd. Dad gum. All right. <laughs> uh, running down the list, we have Walking Dead Deluxe, number 34 by David Finch. Finch. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Batman 146 B cover Yasmin Putri Birds of Prey number 8 cover deed by Jim Lee this is the artist spotlight cover a series that DC's been doing uh, on Jim Lee sketch covers that were recolored I believe for uh, variants 
Uh, then we have Doctor Strange 14 by Alex Ross. Uh, next we have Red Sonia Empire of the Damned cover number one, cover B by Joseph Michael Linsner. Savage Dragon 269 by Eric Larson. Shazam number 10, cover D by Miguel Mercado. This is a foil variant. Oh, I bet you it's gorgeous. Yeah, I can't wait to grab that. Then we have Venom 32 by Nick Bradshaw. This is the Micronaut Spotlight variant cover. Series also running through Marvel books with various uh, Micronauts spotlighted. Then we have X-Men 33, another variant. This is by Russell Dodderman. This is the trading card variant. And, I love those. Yeah, I do too. And finally, we have Spider-Man Shadow of the Green Goblin number one by Michael De Del Mundo. <laughs> so first of all, Is your lose your head tease because of Walking Dead and Spider Man basically? Yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. Is is it weird that I find the Amazing Sp or the Spider Man cover more disturbing than the Walking Dead cover? <laughs> I don't know. That's it a, me out a little bit more. <laughs> and, and I guess the other. <laughs> Did you intentionally bookend them like that as well, Pat? I did. It's nice. Nice work. Well nice work. These, this is definitely a great batch. Um, you know, a couple things that I noted, aside from the disgusting head graphic nature, the, the whatever, uh, it was the uh, gargoyle with Batman. So I guess as long as Batman's not on the gargoyle, that's fresh. So it's not annoying. Is that is that part of the deal with that one, Pat? That's correct. Nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I guess the artists are getting like that Pat guy. Doesn't like <laughs> Batman or Gargoyle. Okay, hear me out. Put we'll Batman beside the gargoyle. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> yeah. I really like that cover. I thought it gave it gave a really nice uh sense of depth and overall scope to the whole thing and uh it is great i voted for it that's for sure definitely and i actually thought it was uh i thought it might be that same artist that you had it for your review a couple weeks past but it, it's a different artist so yeah okay um uh then I, i'm go sorry ahead. No, that's okay. i was just go gonna ahead. i was just gonna say too uh you know <laughs> i definitely noted again also with multiple covers being in this situation with Savage Dragon, Venom, and Doctor Strange, it's like it's very mall atmosphere. There's lots of lots of extras in these covers, <laughs> you know. So I thought that was cool. I, I thought it was a great batch. What do you think, uh, Mike? Yeah, I like it. I think it's great. I, I liked all the covers, um, and and I, it, it's it's cool because like I wouldn't put a Savage Dragon up there because I know I'm. I mean, I like Eric Larson, but. Usually his covers don't stand out to me. So I like the fact that Patrick did this and he put an Eric Larson cover on there. So it, it, it's cool because it's getting his personality. Absolutely. Sharing yeah. things that, that he likes. Um, so yeah, I think it's great. Plus I was right. just glad it was a Savage Dragon cover I could use. Yeah, that falls without, right. causing, without right. causing too much of a uproar so <laughs> right right and the last thing i want to say too is pat since you commented that you agreed with me with i love these trading card variants i think you like them too a lot too mike mike right yeah yeah, yeah. Like you know what i want now i want trading cards of the comic trading card variants. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Marvel, let's go full circle on this. Let's do this. You know, with the a few years ago, the cards came back. Everybody was scrambling trying to get those old cards, yeah. paying a lot of money for them. Yeah. I'm really surprised that Marvel or DC didn't kind of capitalize on that. Capitalize on it and say, holy cow, let's put together. They've got enough art. You know, yeah. they, they can use covers, they can use unused art, anything, and put a set together. Yeah. Um, 
I think they missed it. I, I think it would probably sell now because there's still a little bit of a, a following for it, but I think they missed it, the big the big time. Yeah, it seemed to be more hot for a minute there. But yeah, it's I think it's still kind of lingering. I think they could still, yeah, get get those people. So anyway, I'll shut up now, Pat. Go ahead. Okay, so a couple notes before we get on the uh, winners here. There was one cover that did not receive a vote this week. Uh -oh. um, and uh, we always kind of get on uh, New York Mike's case because sometimes he doesn't give us three picks. Well, this week he gave me zero picks. Hi. Mike. Well, I'm going to possibly just say to New York Mike, since the week's kind of confusing, confusing let's hope. It wasn't any kind of indictment towards the covers you chose, Pat. But more so, not. it's confusing. So maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe. Looking at the covers and and knowing Mike for as long as I've known him, <laughs> I'm gonna say that I think he got busy because yeah. this is what this is what I think. Mike would have voted for Birds of Prey. I think he's a big uh, Barda fan. He would have voted for Red Sonia. So I know he likes he likes girl covers. He likes Lindsner's work, and I think he would have voted for the the Marvels. What, Captain Marvel, what book was that? I can't remember now. Shazam! But Damn, he would. Yeah. I think if, if I was guessing what Mike would that that's kind of a new segment. What would Mike vote for? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's what I think. We are Mike would. Have So I think he just got busy with work, probably. Yeah, could be. So, and we also had uh, the point of contention about a tie for third place, and I just like Mike had a tiebreaker in mind. Okay. And, and I'm still waiting to hear back. So <laughs> I think I think Mike has done this before. We're gonna have two third place winners here, unfortunately or fortunately. It's more art for everyone to enjoy. Yeah. So coming yeah. in, tied for third. Yep, there you go. X Men 33. X Men 33 by Russell Dodderman, the trading card variant. Nice. All right. Also coming in at number three Spider Man Shadow of the Green Goblin, number one by Michael Dodderman. Sorry, that surprises me. That surprises me too. <laughs> this one, I was actually, I'm already kind of thinking about uh, which one could have possibly not received a vote. And I, this was in my thoughts. <laughs> the one that it's kind of cool, but it's, you know, the pumpkins in the background make it look very brainy. So it's like extra gross. Like Mike was saying, you know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's pumpkins, but if you're, if you're not looking at it close up, it looks like it could just be brain matter. <laughs> yeah. Getty. <laughs> All right. Coming in at number two. Strong number two. Batman 146 by Yasmin Putri. Nice. Oh, yeah, that's good. That definitely narrows it down to what I think number one's a shoe in for. Come on. Number one was a shoe in. Coming in at number one. Shazam number 10 by Miguel Mercado, the foil variant. That's awesome without being able to tell it's a foil, in my opinion. That thing is great. Yeah. You probably have to look at that with sunglasses on foil. I love that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I have to say, I'm surprised that the Jim Lee Big Barda didn't didn't make it. I man, I love that cover. Um, my vote or my guess for which one didn't receive a vote, Pat, is Venom. You are incorrect, sir. Dagger, Mike. What's your guess? I'm gonna guess maybe it's a toss up between Doctor Strange and Savage Dragon. I think. Doctor Strange is great. There's just a lot going on there, and, yeah. and you kind of get lost on what it is. I'm going to guess Doctor Strange. 
I'll let you guess Doctor Strange and Savage Dragon because you're wrong on both counts. Holy oh shit. man, really? Savage Dragon would have been my three in the running for what could they yeah. possibly have been was Spider Man, Venom, and Savage Dragon. But wow, none of those, huh? Okay. Well, I voted for The Walking Dead, so it wasn't that one. I think Walking I voted. Dead. Dead. Yeah, The Walking Dead bid, did pretty well. The cover receiving zero votes. Red Sonia. Wow. Oh. Yep. That's surprising. That's wow. Had, had New York Mike voted, <laughs> yeah, he would have gotten a vote. <laughs> huh. But Let yeah, no, Mike, vote now. <laughs> yeah, just for everyone's curiosity. Yeah. He could have broken that tie. Yeah, you know, every every vote counts. Come on. Yeah, I mean, I had my phone open. I'm looking at the whole time until the last minute to cut off the uh, the one that lost. But nope, yeah. no, nobody came through for me. Oh, it was awesome. I like I like ties. Yeah, like you said, more art, more stuff I get to see. But yeah, Pat, great job, great job there. Those are thanks. Awesome. It was fun. It is fun. This week is fun so far in general. I, I can't wait for more. Are, are you ready for, for more, Mike, since you're first? Yep. All right. <laughs> All right, actually, I need to switch this around a little bit. Hey, Mike. Yeah. April Fools, you're not first. Pat, you're first. Ha! Got him. Oh, I need this one. Right? Okay. All right. Hold on. That Watch is me all for him. your April Fool's jokes for the day. Do not expect Watch me kick him from the show. <laughs> oh, April Fool's, you're muted. <laughs> what? <laughs> you're not muted. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what did you read? Pat? All right. So I, I'm going to go a little bit color outside the lines a little bit this week as i mentioned last week i've i've I read a lot recently uh but i read i didn't read anything really that much this week so i'm gonna do like a quick recap of things that i've read in the past maybe like two to three weeks uh the okay. first one uh first one being when i finished up what i did read this week because i've been reading it in uh short bursts that is blade of the immortal volume two blood of a thousand by Hiroaki Samora. This is, you know, this is uh, from the nineties. Um, uh, but I love, I love this book and uh, don't tell Valor. The reason this is that I'm reading this is because he asked to read it. And I said, ah, I don't think so. I'm going to take another look at it before you read it. Um, uh, after concluding, I still believe I, I'm not so sure he should be reading it. Uh, it's got a, it's got over the top extreme violence. Um mm. But man, I, I I loved this at the time, you know. And here's here's the here's the one thing I never finished this because I I was missing one of the trades. I read it in the trade form like this. Uh, I was missing one of the very late trades. It was like uh, it was short run printed or something. And so while in between the time of actually tracking one down, I never got back to it. Some I like have the last one or two trade paperbacks to finish up. So I, I may go back through and read again. It's a great series. His, his artwork is just fantastic. I don't have any examples here, but he, he, he does like uh, he'll do traditional pen and ink, uh, but he'll also do just pencil panels. And sometimes on the same page, he'd like switches back and forth. And um, like I said, his, his artwork is phenomenal. He's, he's probably my favorite manga artist of all time. Well, is this cover uh, an example of his artwork? 
Is this covered? Yeah. Here? Okay. Yeah. It's it's a good example. Yeah, it looks um, awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's it it follows the character Manji. Uh, you see on the cover, he he was he was a bad guy, but he regrets what he did. Um, and he kind of uh, he 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 this he, he got this old uh, magician wizard lady uh, to make it so he he can redeem himself, but in doing so, he has to kill a thousand evil people now to make up for his mm. past transgressions. That's cool. And he's been infected with what they call blood worms. And he basically is like Wolverine. He can heal himself. He can body parts can be locked lopped off. He just sticks them right back on, and these little worms come out and sort of sew them back <laughs> up. That's awesome. So and and then and then the other half of the story is he becomes sort of like a, a traveling companion slash bodyguard to a young girl named Rin, whose parents have been killed by a, a rival dojo. And she's out for revenge. She hires Manji, and their story goes on from there. And there's twists and turns and ups and downs. And it's it's excellent. Like I said, I gotta finish it. Um, definitely get it. Maybe even a must have. If if you're a manga fan, probably a must have. It's it's it was done. It's one of the rare instances in in, in manga, uh, westernized for for our audience where it's it's read in the normal left to right, front to back. Uh, okay. Because it was it was by request of Samora, the artist and writer, because he he the way he set certain things up, he wanted to be in charge of it. So he was he oversaw all the mirror imaging and moving panels around because he wanted it to read better for you know our the U.S. audience and other places in the world. Yeah. So it's a little bit different in that respect because everything. Oh, some of the, some things back in the day they did try to to reverse it and correct it to make it more friendly to the United States audience. But now I, I don't think anything's done that way anymore. Everything's read from back to front, right to left. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's awesome days. to hear. Yeah. That, cause that's yeah. actually my biggest hang up with getting into manga. Cause I've, I've, I've bought a lot of, I've, I've bought a lot of it for max and uh, yeah, I couldn't, I just couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't get into reading it back to front. It was just it, it it literally prevented me from from reading some things that I was interested in. So that's cool. Yeah, and it's kind of, it's it's very it, it it it's very easy to jump right back into too. It's it's it it's not dated uh, like a lot of comic books might be because there's no. It was already uh, sort of uh, juxtaposed ancient samurai things with modern things that didn't quite fit. So. Mm. It, it 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 didn't really date itself because everything kind of just made sense in its own world. So yeah, like I said, if you're looking for if you looking for a manga to pick up, um, it's a really great series to to latch on to, and I think it, anybody would enjoy it. It's again for an older audience, I would say though. A lot of blood and guts. Is it you, color or black and white? It's black and white. Okay. Did you mention how many uh, issues it was, or how many trades it was, or? What I think it's like thirty-two trades. Dang, gone. Yeah, it was never published in traditional Western comic book form. Yes, it was. Oh, well, what? Okay, okay. Yeah. Jeez. Dark Horse, Dark Horse Comics. Ah, okay, I was gonna say that it looked very familiar to me. Yeah. But, um... Okay, I'm uh, I'm, def I'm definitely in Pat. I'm gonna grab that. I I'm re. Probably about three years ago, they started reprinting them in these hardcover on the buses, and I'm um, I was so tempted, but I don't I don't love the covers because they're like, in Dark Horse does this with all their deluxe manga on the buses. They're like sort of like the faux leather bound, and they have like just like a window box in the middle uh, mm -hmm. uh, for, to to showcase the artwork on each cover. And I'm not a huge fan of that, but I would like to have them. I think there's ten on the buses versus like the thirty two. Mm -hmm. individual trade paperbacks like this so mm. i still may do that sometime i don't know yeah i got a lot of the star wars collections with that leather bound with the yeah with the highlighted cover yeah in the middle yeah that's pretty cool i thought but 
Uh, so I didn't expect to spend that much time, but I, it, 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 on that book, but, uh, it, it deserves, it was my favorite, probably my favorite out of everything I'm talking about this week. Not so much of a favorite was Merck and blasphemous number one by distillery. Um, I'm going to give this, uh, undecided. I, there was a lot to go through in this book. Um, I think, I think so- maybe a little bit crippled by Merck's writing still, you know, she's an Italian artist writer i think a lot of things times things get lost in the translation you throw a a more complicated overarching story right off the bat at somebody in an issue number one and i think the the translation might hurt it a little bit um so i didn't love this it was a little confusing a little all over the place i am i am i promised myself i am going to try to read it again uh the artwork's fine it's just a little not sure yet so undecided on that um canary number three finishing up the series by by uh snyder and dan panosian um i i have to say that this overall this is a get it for the series but i i have i do have to also say that i don't think it ever lived up to the potential of number one out of the gate number one out of the gate what i was blown away by it um and i think feel like i was sort of let down in the subsequent issues but it was still good uh so it's it's a get it still get it for me there um fantastic four number 17 forget it spectacular spider-man number one by greg wiseman and humberto (laughs) ramos um this is this is a cool book uh this is uh, greg wiseman he he wrote he was this like the sto- the lead story showrunner story tale teller writer on the spectacular Spider-Man anime series. It's very short lived, but a lot of people love it, including me. Um, uh, this is I, this isn't. I don't think this is the first book he's written in comic book form. Um, I, I it's good. There's a lot of non sequitur pages that don't seem to make any sense yet. But I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because there it's it's still well well written. Um there's maybe some jokes that are a little bit too cute and on the nose. I, I tried to think of what remember what those were last night when I was writing my list down. I couldn't quite remember them, but it's like like a lot of inside jokes about you know, maybe like the Spider-Man movies and the Spider-Man animated. They're 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 okay, but it, it's just like, yeah, they're kind of obvious. Um, but it's 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 definitely also a get it for me. Um the art is is pretty good. It's not, I don't think it's my favorite work I've seen out of Humberto Ramos, but it's still it's still good. He I love his Spider Man, so um, it's good to see the interaction between Peter and Miles too. It's it, it all seems to work very well. And finally on my list for this week is Ultimate Spider Man number two by Jonathan Hickman and Marco Cicchetto. Never talked about one. One was very dialogue heavy. Um, not a lot of Spider-Man action going on. I don't think there's any Spider-Man action going on. It was, it was mainly about uncle Ben, J. Jonah Jameson and Peter all very good. I, I, I'm totally on board. Um, this issue, we finally get into some Spider-Man stuff is, is the adult more grown up. Peter gets his powers. Um, and it, that makes, that also makes for an inter- interesting dynamic between, this version of Spider-Man and the, all the versions we know, uh, because he's married and has two kid, two children, uh, and he's you know he's you know late twenties, early thirties, perhaps, just now learning about his spider power. So that that is a new twist, and then it's uh, very enjoyable so far. So another get it there. Um, that's it. That's all I have this week. Awesome. <laughs> I think that Fantastic Four might. My- Mike, I think that Fantastic Four might have just set the bar for the shortest review ever. I don't know if we're ever going to beat that. I know. I love it. <laughs> well, it sucks for Patrick and his run on Fantastic Four. but uh, The only thing I will give it some credit for is the uh, the artwork. Yeah. The cover looks uh, cool. The cover the cover's cool. The cover, <clears throat> the cover does deal with what's going on in the book. I love that, but, but okay. the mystery of the cover is it is way more engaging than uh, 
the flimsy the story and the, the hokey twists that happen in this book. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, um, I continued, and then Mike, prepare yourself because you kind of teased this last week. Concluded hmm. my journey in the Joker year one in Batman 144. Uh, Mike, and, and do you remember you, you, we, we joked last week because I didn't know how many parts there was going to be in year one. And I said, mm -hmm. I think four. And you're like, who knows? It could be eight. It could be three. You were right, Mike. It's three. It's three. <laughs> Literally three. The uh, Joker year one storyline finishes up in Batman number 144. And um, I'm going to say, I love this cover. This is a great cover. Um, I'm going to say, too, uh, I got to correct myself on a couple things. Well, first of all, I want to start with this. Do you remember in Batman 142, which was uh, Joker year one, part one, that I said that it was a, it was like 60, 70 percent flashback, you know, 30 percent current time storytelling. And then in the Joker year one, part two, which was Batman 143, it became kind of 50 50 between flashback Joker storytelling and current day events storytelling. Do you remember I said that? Well, this one is it's ironically named Joker Year One because there's no flashback. It's it's all current <laughs> storytelling. So it's Joker Year Now. <laughs> right. Yeah. There's no there's no year oneness at all in this. Joker Year 80. Or wait, no. Yeah, yeah. Joker Year 80. Right. <laughs> Which so Again, ironically enough, th this could have been it. The year one, D Joker year one storyline could have been two parts, <laughs> technically. <laughs> you know, the editors should be like, "All right, all right, <laughs> <They're> chip." <laughs> so, in whatever I after I read this, I, I was thinking the thoughts that I just expressed. I went back to part two to see if there was a way that they made it kind of fit in that regard, like why they would call this Joker year one, part three and have no kind of past Joker story in it. So in my investigation of part two, I discovered yet another and our viewers and fans alike will uh, relate to another Kevin Gaff. And this is a big one. Okay. This gentleman is not Raz Al Ghul. <laughs> <laughs> so if you recall, last week I said that they kind of gave us the curveball, whatever you want to call it, that Raz Al Ghul also, tra also trained uh, Joker. In, in the past too, in the, in the, uh, you know, we're looking into the past about Joker year one. And uh, this guy came around and I totally, I don't, I, you know, I Tom Glancy'd uh, this, this panel. It says it right there. Yeah. You can see right on it. <laughs> it says his name is Cower MZ and he's a fragment of Daniel. Okay. And Daniel is Dr. Daniel Captillo. He was first introduced in Bruce Wayne's origin in Batman, The Night, number eight from 2022. Again, by Chip Zdarsky. Mm -hmm. um, so I screwed that up. And the biggest reason I screwed it up is because one, you know, and, and you got to give me a little bit of leeway here with this guy kind of put, he put me in, the frame of mind of Ra's al Ghul type character, you know, very menacing, dark, but genius kind of character. And, and he talks a lot. It's actually talked about a lot by him about how he trained Batman, 
Well, I didn't read Batman the Night, so I didn't know of his origin story in this. So when I hear I trained Batman, that just took my mind right to Ra's al Ghul. Can you guys cut me some slack for that? A little bit. <laughs> it's it's hard because it says right here. Okay, okay, Mike. I said I Tom Glancy that. Okay? Your name, your your brain filled it in something. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway you see what i'm saying though that's how i got there and i'm sorry about it uh but in case you didn't know in batman the night again which was this guy's origin story batman the night number eight he uh he he's the psychological equivalent to raz al ghul for batman he trained Batman how to not be afraid of anything and how to be the super analytical genius. You know, that's what he kept talking about when he was training Batman. And apparently that happened in Batman the Night and I didn't know. So, so this also, again, makes I'm sure this makes you guys more happy to know that now when you add that on to the Joker year one story, it makes more sense that he trained the Joker and he was saying the Joker was better than Batman, that it, you know, it's all this psychological, no fear, craziness, genius stuff that he trained the Joker with. Right. That makes more sense than what you said last week. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Wait, I think maybe that was kind of a backhanded compliment. But anyway, um, and and what actually ha happened, I didn't even mention at the end of Batman 143 was that the Joker killed Daniel, whatever his name is. I can't even pronounce his name there. Um, but whatever, he, he actually killed him at the end of 143, which was kind of cool because he was... We, we we are seeing a lot of bubbles of him thinking. You know how they do that. It's not him talking. It's just him thinking. And as the Joker is killing him, his goal was to train the Joker to kill Batman and to be crazy enough to kill Batman. So actually, in, as he's dying, he's reflecting about how he thinks he accomplished his goal to make this maniacal character yeah. that would ultimately you know not only be batman's nemesis but destroy batman you know so because similar to raz al ghul he was trying to manipulate batman for bad things and batman of course took that training he gave him and is doing good with it you know so so again bringing that all up that's where technically joker year one stopped at the end like that's the last time you see any past incidents was when he kills this psychiatrist, has been psychiatrist or whatever, psychologist, whatever, you know. So then getting into Joker Year One Part Three, uh, as I mentioned, Batman is on this crusade to stop Joker, Jokerizing everyone. Uh, and trying to figure out how he can do that. And uh, there's also kind of an attached but separate story going on with Commissioner Gordon in the GCPD and how he thinks there's all kinds of shady characters, uh, you know, kind of corrupt cop stuff going on, which, you know, is nothing new for obviously the GCPD and Commissioner Gordon. That's kind of always been Commissioner Gordon's gig, helping Batman or, or stopping corruption in the GCPD, right? So um, that's going on in this storyline. And then they connect to where uh, the Joker is Jokerizing everyone at kind of as a cover for the, remember how I said it was kind of attached to the Red Hoods as well? Um, all of the Red Hoods are actually cops in the GCPD. So whenever... Uh, Commissioner Gordon is able to uncover that they're all Red Hood. They're all playing as Red Hood, the Red Hood gang, as part of Joker's plot to Jokerize everyone. Um, he foils it all. You know, he kills a couple of them. There's a, there's a really cool non-Batman fight between Commissioner Gordon and multiple 
uh, officers in the GCPD and, uh, uh, you know, he, he foils all their plans. And then there's this weird thing where Batman can't figure out how to stop the Joker. But then this bat comes crashing in to the GCPD when he's he's also helping Commissioner Gordon with the whole corrupt cops and Red Hood and everything. Um, when that bat crashes in, it does this weird thing with the Jokerized people where the sonic waves that are coming from the bat, the bat or something like that unjokerizes everyone that's Jokerized. So then Batman uses his bat call device or whatever. You know how he has that device he can turn on and like bats flock to him, you know? So he he gets like all these bats with his bat call, you know, whatever, to follow his him through. Say it again, Mike. His bat whistle. His bat whistle, sure. <laughs> <laughs> to go through Gotham City. And as he's doing that, he de-jokerizes every citizen that's been jokerized in Gotham City, and that's how he beats them all. Now, that's fine, whatever. <laughs> but, but what was especially cool about this, in my opinion, <clears throat> was, and I guess this is this is why they called this year one Joker, Joker Year One Part Three, because. Batman has this epiphany after this all happens that uh, if it wasn't for the Joker sending him this one bat that made him realize that the bats can assist him in de-jokerizing everyone, he would have never figured it out. Like, I can't exactly explain or remember in detail why the bat came into the room. But basically, he knows the bat that led him figure out how to de-jokerize everyone was from the Joker. So he has this epiphany that, you know what? The Joker has been playing me all the time. He doesn't even care about the end game. He's not even trying to win. He just likes the game. So he literally, I think it might be the last panel of the uh, comic. He, you know, he's actually talking to Catwoman, AKA back or uh, black cat um, about how, you know what? Maybe Joker could have won all these years millions of times, and I just I, he's just been playing me the whole time. So that's kind of the I guess yeah the reasoning behind making it Joker Year One Part Three because it kind of wraps up his thoughts on the entire history yeah. of Joker that started way back when in Year One. You know, so yeah. It was really cool. Uh, definitely, if you're a Batman fan and a Joker fan, it's a must-have. Um, definitely say get it if you're a casual reader. You want to start somewhere. Um, I, I would say start with uh, Batman 142, maybe even 140. I mean, uh, 141, or maybe even 140 to uh, you know get the first starts of uh, the Jokerizing people and stuff too. That I kind of miss so i wasn't exactly on track uh with but uh definitely at least to get it must have for batman uh, joker fans yeah. nice. and i wanted to add on to this too more um ai i'm assuming mike and i actually took an interior on this one check this one out so you can see how from this picture of uh yeah. you know the raz al ghul impersonator uh wow. Care M Z. You can see how that art is, right? In those in those pictures, right? Yeah. Here's there was and there was just one panel of this uh, in the book that looked like this. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I saw that. Now I know. Going back. Oh, that's to the that. that's the bat whistle too. I'm glad I took this pic. I took this picture because the AI generation. Oh. But there's the bat whistle thing too. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like a subwoofer or something. Yeah, it does. Um, I know Sorrentino had shared, I guess, some video of him. Like the, the, I think he works all digitally, so I think he shared that he captured him doing the actual artwork uh -huh. on on those pages, or at least one of those pages, the one where Joker's in the water. Yeah, all that. I, I think he had shared that. So uh, also, he's basically pushing back on the accusation. A little bit. I think I, I kind of 
you know, Tom Glancy that I didn't put a lot of effort into reading all about it. Mm -hmm. um, I figure I'll just wait. I'll, I'll wait until everything comes out or doesn't come out or whatever. You know, not. Yeah. I mean, that's a cool picture it. though, right? Isn't that? Yeah, cool? it's awesome. It looks great. Did you say something? Did you respond to me, Pat? I didn't, but I, I was going to say that uh, not to throw more fuel on your fire, Kevin, but I, when I was listening to the show last week's show back during the week and we, 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 we were talking about racial goal, I Googled it to see if there was any past, you know, instances of him training the Joker and nothing came up and that <laughs> I started thinking, why did, why isn't like the new issues, you know, the 140 issues showing up? Yeah. Now it all makes sense. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pat. I'm sorry. Pat's like, ah, internet's broken. <laughs> hey, I, I can't tell you. But I, it, at the time, I that I didn't put two and two together there either. I, I was just like, wonder. it's just strange that there's no recent hits for that Google search, you know? Yeah, I can't. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you trusting me over over the internet. <laughs> Which technically, I'm on the internet. It should have at least come up with uh, comics and collectibles. And yes, exactly. Game. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> come on. But yeah, once again, I apologize to not only uh, you and uh, Mike, but uh, also the internet for. For, uh, but but I do correct myself. That's the thing we do when we have these gaffes. We correct ourselves later. Thank God. So you know. Anyway. Yeah. All right. That's it for me, Mike. What do you got? Right. Well, there's a saying in my household that goes something like this: You can never have too much Batman. Right. <laughs> so, I read the Batman first night. Um, I I need to start with this though. I, initially, I was going to review the fog number one. Okay. I read the first three pages and then I put it down because I didn't even want to read any more to review it. So here's my review of the fog number one. People don't talk the way the conversations go in that book. It's all forced and it, it's unnatural. And I just couldn't stand it. Wow. So and I'm, I'm, I'm mad because I pre ordered all of them. Son of a gun, I was so looking forward to this. That Luckily, sucks. Though, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. Womp, womp, womp. Cool covers, at least. Yeah, they are cool covers. How's the artwork? <laughs> Interior artwork. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, it's just so disappointing. It really does suck. I was looking forward to that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, don't buy it. You can have mine. <laughs> well, I'm yeah, I've been on a sabbatical from being able to buy this winter because you know I'm in lawn care, I'm broke. Yeah. So uh, you know, so I'm glad I didn't order those then, I guess. But yeah, let me uh let me let me at least look at yours and then maybe I might just grab them for the covers. Right. <laughs> um luckily I bought the Batman first night. Now I wasn't gonna get this because I wanted it, but I wasn't gonna get it because it's black label, oversized, and it was you know, what was it eight bucks, you know, so Two strikes, oversized magazine size. I hate storing them all that. Uh, the price, it's like I'm not gonna get it. I was in the store, I saw it. It's like okay, I might as well get it. I'm so grateful that I did. Awesome. So uh, this is one of three. Looks like uh, Joker Year One. <laughs> right. Uh, written by Dan Jurgens, um, legendary Superman writer. So I, I knew it was gonna be. I kind of going into it, I expected a well written story. Uh, art by Mike Perkins and then colors by Mike Spicer. I definitely want to highlight his colors because, man, this book is beautiful inside. Uh, it's it set in 1930. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Right. I was just saying, look, the cover looks awesome. So that's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, I love the A covers. The B covers, a lot of times variant covers are a little bit better than the A cover. Um, this one, I mean, I just love the A covers on these. Um, so it's set in 1939. Um, Gotham is coming out of it was just a long list of up and downs. We had the Great War, Prohibition, the Roaring Twenties, the Great Depression, and now we're at the you know the rise of the Nazis in the modern age. Um, and uh, what's going on in Gotham is city officials are being murdered, and uh, it's so cool because we've got you know talking about year one, 
this is legitimately Batman year one. Um, we've got Commissioner Gordon meeting and talking to his friend Bruce Wayne about this new vigilante called the Batman, which, which is kind of cool. Um, and then we've got uh, in, so we've got this. This is like the first reveal, the first big reveal of the Batman. There's a real small panel on the page previous, which is kind of cool. But then, you know, this is where he's comes in to save um, the uh, the mayor. He's being attacked by these two preacher like men. Uh, they're almost monster like. Um, and the whole time, it's so cool because the mayor is on the phone with Commissioner Gordon talking about the Batman that Bruce Wayne was just talking to him about earlier. It's kind of neat. Um, Can I? And, I got a nitpick about this image real quick. Okay. It looks like the glass is crashing down. It's got the crash sound, but looking at the glass behind him, none of it's broke. Well. <laughs> Right? It's, I mean, am I crazy? It's a tiny hole right where his body's covering it. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Anyway. Whatever's got to make it work. I, I'll buy that. Yeah. That's good, yeah, Mike. Yeah. That's good, yeah. Um, so he, he's fighting these two men and our monster. They're just like monsters. They're on almost unbeatable. And uh, they end up fighting all the way up to the roof. And they throw Batman off of the roof. And uh, he kind of he lands out in this alley, and he's pulled into uh, there's a synagogue right on the other side of the alley. He's pulled into the synagogue by a rabbi, um, and basically, we and that's only like the first half of the book. There's so much more, but we've got no Batmobile. You know, he's just driving around a, a regular old car. There's no Batcave. It seems like it's just a big. What's the car? I don't know, uh, 1937 something or other. Well, speculate. What What is it? Like, is it a Camaro or is it like a Winnebago or what? Yeah, it's an Oldsmobile. <laughs> <laughs> it's a basic. <laughs> I don't even know when Oldsmobile came. It's a Ford. I know Ford was around in 1939. But it's a basic sedan, basically? Yeah, it is a basic car. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, it's. A, yeah, Bruce Wayne's driving around in this nice high end car. Um, but yeah, Batman's driving around in, in just a, a standard car. No Batman. Sorry, I don't know why I'm being so weird about details right now. <laughs> I know you broke my flow. Let me start I'm over. Sorry, I'm sorry. All right. So I read Batman the first night. All right, not that far. Um, so we've got no Batmobile, no Batcave. He's doing like real detective work, fingerprints, stuff like this. And, and he gets a fingerprint from one, one of the knives that those henchmen were, were uh, trying to kill him with, Gordon, as Batman. And that's their first interaction. You know, Gordon's ready to call all of his boys and arrest them. But he kind of convinces them to, uh, look, I've got this knife. Run this print for me. And then we'll go from there as far as their relationship. And it, it's so cool. He's like, well, how am I going to get a hold of you? So there's obviously no bat signal. You know, Batman's like, I'll call you. Um, and yeah, it's it's just it's fantastic. Uh, it's got a shocking ending, so whenever you read it, you'll get that little joke. Um, this is a must-have. <laughs> Can't tell you how much I love this book. It's just the artwork, the writing, the pacing, the themes, everything. I, I love Batman as a detective in 1939. It's so great. All right. Well, I have a question. Where does this literally play into year one then, as far as you, what are your thoughts on that? Um, is it like I, completely I, separate universes and this is kind of a retold? I think it's just, one? yeah, it's, yeah, it's same universe, kind of, uh, you know, just uh, more details and stuff. Here's, I mean, look how awesome the artwork is. And I, I think it's so great because it's not, it's drawing the art, it's drawing Batman the way he was drawn classically. Yeah. Classically, you know? Um, and uh, also there was a big, I never noticed this before as much as I, you know, I don't have those old detective comics, but he's got the purple gloves. And I didn't know that was such a big deal until this came out. Everyone's talking about the purple gloves. It's like purple gloves. What? And then you go and you look at the old detectives and All yeah, right. there's, there's purple gloves. <laughs> Love symmetry, yeah, yeah, yep. yep. and then there's uh, so there's a whole history of his gloves, like when he got the little little wings on them or whatever. 
Um, I didn't read into all that. I was just too busy reading the book. So, <laughs> um, but look how great that artwork is. That's where the that rabbis pour them into the synagogue, and fantastic. Absolutely love it. You guys should both buy it. I definitely uh, am interested. Oh, and it says seventeen plus. Um, yeah, there's some there's some choice words in there, um, and uh, some violence. Nothing over the top, but so this is like oh, a graphic. No, no, there is there is some graphic stuff. So yeah, this is definitely a seventeen plus. Okay, so this is a graphic novel that's three parts, right? No, it's it's the black label books. Oh, black label. Oh, yeah, black it. label. Oh yeah, I dig those. Yeah. Those are those are the only ones that I think I that's I just made a rule for myself because it, mm -hmm. it's a good workaround because I've I've been committed. I'm like, I'm not gonna buy any more Batman offshoot titles. I'm just gonna get Batman and Detective and yeah. everything else. But if it's a black that's what I'll say to myself to make sense of it. But if it's a black label book, I can grab it. Or a graphic novel, I can grab it. But if it's just a regular, you know, title or regular a format comic, I'm gonna skip it. Yeah, and um, another thing I like about this, just the feel of the book. You know, it's not super stiff. The covers, every everything is. It's easy to read without worrying about, you know, creasing that spine, which, you know, we all do. Well, not everybody, but I do. So <laughs> I was a little more relaxed in handling this book too. Um, awesome. It's uh, it's, I can't love say it. enough about it. I'm so glad that I got it. I love it, and uh, everybody should get it. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've really turned around on that format. I think I've mentioned it. You know, I, I really do like that uh, the black label and the distillery type mm -hmm. uh, books. They're really nice. Yeah, like you've pointed out, you really get a great presentation of the artwork because of it's a larger style. Yeah. And it, it, holy cow, it really worked with this. I guess it has to be good artwork. If it's trashy artwork, it's just. <laughs> magnifies the track <laughs> so right right all right awesome so we hit it you want to take that image down i guess <laughs> oh man i feel like I feel like this is the first time in a very long time that we all had three very passionate and detailed, lengthy get it or forget it. I love it. I love it. Got a mix of good and bad in there, too, thanks to uh, Pat covering eight books. <laughs> all right. I can't wait to see uh, what Pat has in store for the horizon. How about you, Mike? Are you excited? Very yeah. excited. All right, cool. All right, sweet. I'm going to start out with something uh, pretty basic from uh, Hasbro. Maybe basics, not uh, you know. Is that is that a derogatory adjective now? Basic entry grade. There you entry go. Grade. <laughs> anyway, we talked about uh, X Men '97 a bit in the group this week because uh, of course X-Men 97 dropped on Disney plus and I did catch up on all the episodes and, and I'm digging it. And uh, we had a little uh, camaraderie happening in the group with uh, Patrick enjoying it. The animation's better. Johnny agreed. Uh, Mike from New York kind of agreed and kind of overstepped it, started poking me for some reason on that one. But um, so X, so Hasbro dropped some uh, X Men '97 figures, and here's what I have to say too, Pat. You know, if I if I redo something you did, I'm sorry, it's my memory. You didn't mention these dropping yet, right? Because these are already out. These weren't even up for pre order. These are already out. I feel like it's something you would have hit in the pre order stage. Did you? Yeah, we went over them before. 
Dang it. Okay, what's okay. this? Look, here's my it, it, it's good. It is good because they're hitting shelves right now. So okay, cool. And then Cyclops, and apparently I only cropped uh Nightcrawler, so the rest of these picks are gonna be kind of lame. So <laughs> Cyclops looks like he's got licorice or a, a Twizzler. And this is the Executioner, which is, he's the focused villain. Man, these pictures suck so bad. The he's the focused villain in episode one. Uh, and there's what Magneto looks like in uh, this series. He comes around in episode three, which I think that's the current episode that's dropped. Maybe four dropped, and I haven't. No, I think it's I think a three dropped three. this week. Yeah, just yeah. Three. Yeah. So this is what Magneto looks like in episode three. It's a pretty cool figure. And then Marvel Girls in it. Uh, but uh, yeah, so you can you can get those on Hasbro dot Hasbro .com now. Um. If I had money, I would definitely grab them all, but unfortunately, I don't. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to wait until the aftermarket and probably pay out the nose. Uh, but then I went uh, with some Star Wars. Oh, I got to change over for this. This is the ones I had to switch over. Great. Oh, I was gonna make a joke. Oh, man, I, I could have. <laughs> Could have swore I cropped these. Man, these suck too. Damn it. That's ah, right. They're, they're so tiny. All right. This is a four pack uh, based on the comic book uh, Star Wars The Last Command. Uh, and uh, it includes, man, I, I'm not even going to be able to tell because they're so tiny on my oh, screen. Oh, yeah, they're tiny. Yeah, because I can't. I drives me nuts. Oh, well, there you got Joris Saboth. Yeah, thanks, Pat. And Mara Jade. And Mara Jade. And then, oh, oh, wait, that's the wrong one. Then it's also got Luke. And who's the fourth and, one here? And Looks Luke. Like Luke. Oh cool yeah, two Luke. Luke's, right? Yeah. yeah. Man, I didn't put these in order too because they're too small to dagger. Pat, how do you do this job? This is tough. Because <laughs> okay, so I'm, I might I might be revealing since my pictures are out of order what my second Star Wars is. Yeah, there it is. So then there's a two pack of a clone and a droid. This is uh, for pre order as well. I'm going to just run through the, the... So there's Luke and Luke. Yeah. <laughs> like that said. And there's... What's his name again, Pat? Say it again. Jorth. The both. That's how, I always, that's how I always said it. Maybe I'm mispronouncing it. And then there's uh, Mara Jade. And this... I thought this... I, I wanted to put this picture... Man, I wish these were big. Because this is a cool pick. Because the way she has that hood she can wear, too. I thought that was really cool. All right, now back to the clone and the droid pack. Uh, this is a very cool setup for this clone. And similar to what I just said about Mara George, Jade with the hood, uh, his helmet is actually removable in this set as well. I don't know how many times uh, you've shown figures that I keep asking that question every time I see it, every time I see them. So I thought that was cool, right? Yeah. And if you know what he's sitting on there is the droid, because the droid's like collapsible like they are in the, you know, droid ship oh, yeah. comes down. So that's pretty cool. There they are chilling together. <laughs> that's a pretty cool two-pack, two right? Yeah. Especially it's, for army builder type people. Yeah. And that's such a hard thing to do is to get the head, you know, be able to put the helmet on and off without making it look so ginormous. Right, right, exactly, exactly. That's good job. And there's, yeah, there's another, this is, you know, traditional Return of the Jedi Luke. They are money, Karen. Karen, stop <laughs> rushing, stop <laughs> rushing the process. <laughs> they are money. That's good, Mike. Oh, <laughs> uh, there's Luke. 
That was so funny, Pat. Thanks for thanks for that comic relief. I, I actually really needed it. I'm switching back now uh, to the picks that I did remember to crop, so this is all cool or, or more cool. That not not that one, not that one. Um, Karen, the answer to your question: um, the clone droid pack is forty four ninety nine. It's pretty pricey. And then um, the last command, the last command four pack is eighty nine ninety nine. Jeez, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then these X Men are twenty four ninety nine each. All right, like I said, let me get back into some cool actually crop picks. Uh, this is. Partially, obviously, I love McFarlane. So here's some McFarlane stuff. This is for Johnny, too. Uh, but uh, this wow. is the uh, Movie Maniacs series. Uh, Rocky Balboa. He's awesome. He's and post-fight head. Yeah, yeah. A couple heads uh, with this. Just running and his pictures cool. here. <clears throat> Comes with this card. And then, of course, I had to add this. That's how it looks from behind. <laughs> That'd be cool if they had. <laughs> for, uh, for the accessories, if they had two turtles, that would be cool. What? If he had two turtles. Remember, he bought the turtles. That's how he met Adrian. Anyway, next. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Um, we actually had those turtles for, for a long time. Stallone did. Yeah, turtles live forever, man. Yep. Yeah. This pack is only $40, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So it's limited to 6,400 pieces. Wait, and, uh, what includes collector's card with stand and a bonus item? The bonus items, the turtles. <laughs> now, the bonus item is that little versus symbol. Oh, that's the stand card no, with the, stand. The stand is where it says Rocky Balboa. He's standing on it. The bonus item is the versus thing. No, see the question mark? That's the bonus. You don't know what it is. Oh, yeah, there's hope. That's all we say. Versus is the oh, stand. I see what you're saying. Hard stand bonus turtle. Oh, 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 oh. There's two stands. One that Rocky's on and then one that holds the card. Gotcha. Okay. I'm yeah. sorry. Like, yeah, you should do this segment sometime. Anyway. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then lastly, um, let me see if I... Uh, this is all over the place, but I got a lot of all over the place uh, here. This is, oh, wait, this isn't last. Oh, wait, forget you saw that. Here's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> oh, my gosh. My here, this is, you know what this reminds me of? You looking through your toy box as a kid. Like, I don't need it. Moving all your toys around. Right here. This is next. Hold on a sec. All right, literally, well, I'm going to show you this. You're going to stall because there's something that didn't even upload at all. Ah, you did say you were going to say, hey, where's that? I did say it, but I really want to show it to you. So here, here's what I have to start. Okay. So this is by Sideshow. This is, a, a, you know, a cyberpunk Harley Quinn statue. Hmm. Oh, based on uh, art jerk. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. You said that. Keep saying that looks it. really awesome. Even her hyena is cyber now. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> I like that it actually tells you what the bonus part is here. <clears throat> bonus part. It's not a secret. 
What is it? Her head? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I'm gonna see if there's a difference there. I don't think there is. Those look like all the three. Maybe the other, maybe she has a different head in that other photograph. Perhaps. That looks really cool, though. I mean, you know, with, with Harley, I'm either a hit or miss on whether I like it or not. I'm not a fan of the character anymore. I don't read any of the, the way they change all the new 52 and stuff. But um, this looks really cool. I would actually display this one. I like that one. Cyborgs and stuff. All right, all right. Let's uh, let's go through some. Let's go through these picks in no particular order to see all the craziness. Ah, see, look at that head. Oh, see, I don't like that one. Neither do I. <clears throat> all right, this is a uh, deluxe edition. Okay, okay. Let's get around to that too. So there's a standard, a deluxe, and a deluxe bonus edition. <laughs> so it's a deluxe deluxe. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've actually got uh, what, what's included with uh, all of them as well, and it's uh, kind of crazy. The deluxe version comes with three additional head parts. Mm. And uh, there's a swappable mask. Oh, oh, well, that's that's in the deluxe edition. That's very confusing how they write that. I'm not even going to say it. But there's three well, different editions. Uh, obviously, this is the deluxe. And I wish you could look at these picks big while you scroll through them, Pet. Isn't that frustrating? You can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just going to go through them all. I think I would have to splurge for the bonus version because that's the only head I like. Yeah, I don't like that one either. Oh, that one's okay. She looks like she's a little, she looks a little sleepy though. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah. Hold on one sec. Swap them. So you get a little stand to put the head on when you're not using it. Oh yeah, yeah, I noticed that too. Yeah, isn't that isn't that funny? Yep. Oh, then you've got the different badges you can put on there too, maybe with the HQ, and then uh, it's like the Japanese words. Yeah. Obviously, a lot of these are just the same pictures and different. Yeah. Yeah, I like the jester hat head more than the others. You can see this is two feet tall. Yeah, I was gonna say that is huge. Yeah. Yeah, they're all the heads come with their own little stands. <laughs> <laughs> There's the back. Man, that seriously, I would just take a statue of that hyena. Right. The, the hyena is cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I like her eyes. I like the effect they made on her eyes there. That looks really cool. Yeah. Oh, wait. LED illumination? Oh, yeah. The lights in the base or oh, the, the base. signs and stuff in the base light up. Yeah. Like that. No, that's, that's interesting. I thought that was just a, a paint job. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Karen's asking me, she's sending me a text. How much is this? Well, that's what I was going to say, too, after I showed you all the picks. If you want to start guessing now, that's fine. So guess for standard. Standard. Standard version, 899. Oh, wow. I, I feel way off. I was going to say standard 350, but. Yeah, the standard what? is eleven $1 hundred and five dollars. Oh, I was talking tax. 
<laughs> yeah, right. oh, there's another cool picture, more of a oh, sign of the hand. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's a Lux edition, which basically we'll just assume that you know we go to standard, you got the Lux, you got more heads, more extra parts, you got the deluxe bonus, you get more heads, extra parts, and then some, you know, another maybe that includes the stands. Let's go there. All right. I'm gonna go 13. For the deluxe? Yeah. The deluxe is fourteen hundred dollars. Jeez. And then what's the deluxe bonus? The super deluxe. Deluxe deluxe. Patrick. It shouldn't be that much more. Right. For just for just a head. So that's all you're getting with the bonus is a head. You know, I'm I apologize. I don't have what the super deluxe bonus. Hold on. You did that on purpose. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what also adds in the super deluxe bonus. <clears throat> Sorry about it. So that you can't even guess based on. Well, I already can't afford it. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the super deluxe bonus is $1,725. Oh, My goodness. Holy cow. Oh yeah, Prime One Studios. Yeah, they're they're up there. Yep. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. But mm -hmm. uh you know, affording that's yeah, a whole it's like buy a statue or make my truck payment for a few months. <laughs> yeah, mean, literally. Yeah, it's like car payments. Yeah. We're talking somebody's mortgage sometimes with these. <laughs> I don't know why. It's literally not, you know, I'm I'm doing the same thing I always do to add picks like what I've done today. Mm -hmm. And it's literally I I I knew I put them in here earlier and it didn't it didn't have them in there. Man, I'm, I'm but it's not showing my picks to upload at all it's so crazy for these man it's really cool too i really wanted to show you guys this stuff i can't even get one pick to upload what happens when i refresh will i just leave the room and come back I don't know. Are you which one are you on? Excel or main? Yeah. Hmm. Let me try to uh, upload it with overflow. Nope, it's still not there. That's so weird. Okay, I'm not even gonna bore anybody with the technical difficulties still. But let me let let me tell you, it's an awesome new Lego set coming out. Um, uh, based on Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, it's got a big castle and a dragon and a bunch of characters, <laughs> a bunch of classic Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Minifigs, uh, you know, basically everything and anything you can imagine from Dungeons and Dragons, you know, elves, obviously human warriors, you know, thieves, all the classic Dungeons and Dragons stuff. And it's this really cool castle, uh, all made out of Lego, of course. Uh, and on the front side, it just looks like your traditional really cool castle. And it's got a mount on it that you can, the also has a dragon that comes with it, that you build a dragon, obviously, separately, that you can kind of play with, and it mounts on the castle. And then you turn the castle around and you can see inside the castle. And it, and like I said, it comes with like 10 uh, minifigs as well. Um, so I thought that was awesome. So, you know, I'm not a huge Lego collector, but, you know, if something's awesome enough, I, I, I want to grab it. And uh, for how awesome this was, too, I thought the price was. And again, this is because we're trained in today's society to expect horrible things, I guess. <laughs> but... I thought the price was fairly reasonable for how big this thing is with, you know, it comes with a coming with so many different awesome things. Uh, it was only three fifty nine ninety nine, you know, which 
if you're if you're familiar with Lego prices nowadays at all, uh, it that's definitely reasonable in my opinion for a for a nice set of uh, different Lego stuff. But yeah, Lego Lego coming out with a Dungeon and Dragon set that I wish I could show you. Uh, but I don't know why my computer is bitter. It's like I've uploaded so many pictures. It's like, you're done. You're done today. You're done. It's not even letting me try, so I apologize. So that's it for the horizon. <laughs> Dang it. Wait, where where did you find that? I just Googled it. Thank you, Pat. Okay, so you just uploaded that now? Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Isn't that awesome? Look at that thing. Yeah, it's very, very involved. There's a lot of stuff going on there. It's cool. Yeah. Isn't that cool, Mike? Mike, you're He's muted. Stunned. Yeah. Dang, man. I, had a, I said a lot of jokes while I was muted, too. <laughs> I was wondering why everybody was so quiet. I was thinking that you guys were so mad at me for not having picks, and I wanted them to oh, say anything. I had to mute myself. My dog was talking to the neighbor. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is really cool. And I had a pick where it had people playing with it, and uh, you know, to get a perspective. And and uh, yeah, this thing's pretty big too. Like I said, you know, if you're familiar with. You know, Lego costs nowadays. Doesn't three fifty nine seem pretty reasonable for this gargantuan thing, right? Yeah, yeah, I would say not reasonable, but standard. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> like you need to go to the Lego store in the mall. I mean, seriously, you you get something that's the size of my microphone. It's like two hundred fifty bucks now. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. We wanted to buy all the Harry Potter castles for Ayla for her last birthday or whatever. We like, we can't do that. Like the, the big awesome was like $800 now. It's like, oh my God, you know, paid like, uh, I think like 400 for R2-D2 last year for Lexi or something. It's insane. But anyway. <sighs> so thanks for saving me a bit with that one, Pat. I really, I really wanted everyone to see it because I really liked the way it looked and, uh. Again, similar to uh, what you guys have done today with uh, obviously following kind of the standard way we do things, but changing it up in our own little way. I was excited about having a Lego, too, because I don't think, you know, you don't really highlight Lego on, you know, so I just wanted to try to be my own little Kevin twist on the horizon as well, you know, so sorry about that one being the debauchery part, damn it. Anyway. Don't dwell on it. Huh? Don't dwell on it. My you know me, you know me, Mike. I can't. I'm my day's wrecked. My You're a day's dweller. I am a dweller. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Are we ready to close yeah. up uh this special edition now? Yep. All right. Pat, you're first. Uh, we found out today that uh, Car MZ is no Ra's al Ghul. <laughs> Facts. We also found out today that uh, on a regular show, Pat has the most prep work that needs to be done prior to the show. Right. All right. Um, Kevin came up with a new shirt. That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> Those will be in production. <laughs> Facts. Karen, you got some? Karen says Kevin broke Mike's flow with Batman. I did. Yeah. I did. 
Well, don't get mad at me, Karen. This is this is coming from other people. Last week, Mike said you were sleepy. Apparently, this week you're just impatient. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> throw, she threw. <laughs> she kept throwing out those reminders. All I could think about is the hooks that get people off the stage. <laughs> yeah, get out of there. All right. Um, we also learned that uh, Joker's just been playing with Batman all these years. That's it. I mean, he could he could beat him anytime he wanted. He's just been playing around with him, you know. Yeah, that's actually a scary thing. Yeah. For, for <laughs> Bruce Wayne to come to that conclusion. Yeah. Like, oh man. Yeah. Um, so we had some uh, some get it on our reviews, but we also had a couple past books like uh, The Fog and Fantastic Four. Don't waste your time anymore makes me sad yeah. yeah uh once again we we know we found out we we reinforced the idea that black label can be awesome but it also can magnify the trash yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. not in this case today though hey uh i wanted to do something that's both uh two-part this is for mike and uh uh thank you to pat uh, Pat noticed that uh, the one segment that we changed a little bit today that I forgot to start right out the bat, and Pat's like, it's okay, it's okay. We, I didn't even talk about what my mistake was, and Pat's like backing me up with, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry about it, let's move on. But Mike, I, I did want to show you because I didn't want you to think that you were left out. I'm just going to play this for a couple seconds so you'll see what I mean. See, I made it for you too, Mike. I just forgot to put that one up. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Anything else, Mike? Um, well, I guess the, I can recap here. I don't pay attention sometimes. I didn't realize that. You didn't. Okay. <laughs> I was actually thinking that I wish I paid more attention. I can't wait to watch the show listen to the podcast or both to uh, get more of your review on your uh, first uh, show you reviewed today because uh, it sounded interesting. I feel like I missed a couple things at the beginning though, because I was doing my own thing. So yeah, it sucks when you don't pay attention, you miss the good stuff. Yeah. Karen, did you have anything else? Nope. Pat, do you have anything else? No, I think I'm done for today. <sighs> Well, I hope everyone's enjoyed this special edition. As you can tell, you know, being practiced counts. It 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 matters in our own special uh, fortes, right, Mike? Yeah. After so many episodes, you know, what a hundred. This is what one twenty six. Um, we kind of get into a good routine, and it's good to do this so we can appreciate what you know. For me, what you guys put into uh, your segments because it's. Until you actually do it, sometimes you don't realize all the ins and outs of it. So it's cool. Facts. Facts. It is. Uh... I'm kind of done. I've pretty much watched everything I can find to review. So. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, there's a uh, New York Mike. Uh... Oh, he's still. Oh, I thought he was liking the uh, the new animated series. He thinks uh, the new one sucks too. Apparently, okay, interesting. Okay, thanks for that input, Mike. All right, let's determine that he would have voted for that uh, Red Sonia book that nobody else did. So, yeah, that's the Maybe. other uh, question everyone wants to know, Mike. Would you have voted for Red Sonia this week? Yeah. Let's close it out while we uh, wait for that answer, though. Uh, please like and hit that bell to get notified of everything we post. Like, subscribe, and hit that bell. Uh, also, comment your thoughts, questions, and suggestions below. Uh, subscribe to Comics and Collectibles. Uh, I think he, he said that's the old series. I think he's saying he liked the old series. So he's maybe that's he can we could infer that he doesn't like the new series. No, I think he's saying it. I thought he's saying that the old series still sucks. I don't know. Oh, 
the old uh, X Men the animated series still sucks. What did you think of the new one, Mike? Was I right about that? That you did actually like that? <clears throat> All right. While we wait for the Red Sonia and the updated X Men ninety seven animated series answers from yeah. Mike from New York, subscribe to Comics and Collectibles in the Crawl Space on Spotify for podcasters or many other podcast providers. And listen to the edited podcast of this live stream on Spotify. They'll be posted no later than Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. I should, I'm going to change that to Wednesday. Uh, follow Acceler Comics on Facebook, Instagram, and or X, a.k.a. Twitter. And follow Acceler underscore comics on TikTok and whatnot. And uh, watch our shows on the Whatnot app. You can bookmark one of the shows right now to get notified when all the ridiculous deals will be offered. The show that's currently available to be bookmarked bookmarked and bookmarked bookmarked is a toy show but i also you know i failed to mention this last week uh, max has been doing a good job with some magic shows uh on acceler comics on whatnot so if you're into magic the gathering there's definitely regular magic the gathering shows still happening while i'm kind of on a little bit of a sabbatical with the comics and the toys uh but there is a toy show you can bookmark now um <laughs> new york mike that's definitely an x-men 97 reference uh, he's saying the new one is okay. It's better than the old. Got it. So I was right. Nailed it. Hey, yo, your grandpa. You have a good one, too. <laughs> All right. Check out what we have to offer on eBay as well at Acceler underscore comics. Uh, and in our shop at ExcelerComics.com. Uh, you can find the shop tab at the top of the homepage on our website. Uh, and you can help support the show and everything we do and plan to do through Patreon at patreon.com slash Acceler Comics. Uh, watch Cover Combat. Oh, man, that's not updated. Watch Cover Combat 8, Round 5, Acceler Family Edition, this coming Monday, April 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that's uh, an exciting show. Uh to say the least. And then watch our next live stream on YouTube or Facebook next Saturday, April 6th. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. At, at 8 30 a.m. ish Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> and then keep up with everything Acceler has planned, like special edition train wrecks like today, and a lot of awesome shows. Um and cover combat, all that good stuff. Uh, with the newly added Karen's calendar with two K's that's featured uh, at the top of our homepage at accelercomics.com. Mike, I thought you were supposed to do that part. You were supposed to do the closing. Nope, I'm just watching the clock, see if we can get in under two hours. <clears throat> all right. Okay, I got two minutes to get into two hours. Okay, cool. I'm done. I'm done. You guys got anything else? Nope. No. I'm done. <sighs> All right, cool. That's, that's a lot of fun. Let's do it next year. You know, if we do it every year, year after year, we'll get it'll it'll be more smooth then. All right, Mike. You say so. <laughs> All right. Until that happens, don't forget. Appreciating great art is awesome, and reading a great story is also fun. So why not pick up a comic book and do both? Accelerate.